Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Film Don't Lie University. I am Brett Coleman. That is Chris Harris. And we are here today at FDLU to teach you how to fish. What we believe in is teaching you the skills you need so that when you're watching tape, you can identify what makes a great fantasy player, what makes a trap fantasy player, as in maybe somebody that was just a one-year wonder or a fluke, and possibly most importantly, how to identify the rookies you need to own to have success in your leagues this year and in dynasty players all future years ahead. So today we're gonna to be talking about running back acceleration and long speed, how to identify what good RB acceleration looks like. And we're gonna jump right into it here with this play with Ezekiel Elliott from week seven of this past year. And it was a beautiful touchdown run. Chris, why don't you start by taking us through it? So I guess what I wanna start by saying is there's a difference between acceleration and long speed. You have guys who have one and not the other. Zeke Elliott has both, but this play with the, against the 49ers, what I'm looking for, what tells me that a player has good acceleration, is often what the defense does and how they react. And when Elliott takes this carry, he's going to cut it to the outside. And, you know, there's, it's, it's great how he gets through the line right there. That's great. But what I'm really focused on is the two defensive backs, Jimmy Ward, K1 Williams. I want to watch, watch them try to close in on Zeke when he gets to the second level. They can't because they take bad angles because they think he's going to be in a place that he's not, a place that a mortal running back wouldn't be. He hits the gas and he's gone. I, I think this is something very simple that people who watch football can start to learn. When you see defenders take an angle that they think they should be able to get a guy, they're world-class athletes, they think they should be able to get Zeke Elliott and neither Ward nor Williams can. I think that's a good point is what you can tell it's good acceleration when he turns a good angle into a bad angle just with his speed. You know, it's Absolutely. not that the angles were necessarily bad to start. It's the fact that Zeke's acceleration is so good that he made them into bad angles. So, you know, let's go with the next play, which is a very similar thing. One of our favorite young running backs, Alvin Kamara, who breaks off a huge 74-yard touchdown against the Rams, who, again, had a ton of speed on defense. Not the best run defense, but in terms of speed, they were a very fast defense. And you can see, again, he doesn't have the best long speed, but in terms of the acceleration to get from first gear to second gear, Boom. it is incredible. <laughs> I mean, once he puts his foot in the ground, again, he turns good pursuit angles into bad pursuit angles. It, you know, it's, it's insane how just weaving through the second level, there, there's really nothing you can do about that. Watch the there's defensive back there. You can do because, That's right. Ron, uh, it's Ron Bartell and watch him flop. This is a world-class athlete. Watch Ron Bartell reach and reach, and does he touch him? You can tell me, Brett, whether he touches him or not. He, he suddenly, oh, he's like, I don't think he does. That, that, dude, that dude is supposed to be here. Wait a minute, that dude's five yards further than I expected him to be, and that's how you know Alvin Kamara has sick acceleration. And you make such a good point, which is, what does he have, four or five speed, long speed-wise? Like, he's not, they almost catch yeah, him from behind on this. Four or five flat. Right. I mean, they almost catch him from behind. That's right. Absolutely right. So it's, it's, not, it's not elite long speed. If it was you know, Tyreek Hill, he would have been gone 10 yards ago. It's not elite long speed, but what matters is the, he has the acceleration on this zone run to clear the first level, completely burn the third level defenders, and get free. If he doesn't have that kind of acceleration, he wouldn't have been free in the first place. So again, he, he has the lower body strength to kind of shake off that tackle when they did catch him, so he does get the touchdown out of it. But he wouldn't have even gotten close if he wasn't so gifted at acceleration. And here's kind of a more subtle one, sure. kind of rounding out our examples of what good acceleration looks at. This is Deion Lewis right. uh, in week 10 of last year inside the red zone. This is one of your favorite plays. Why don't you walk us through it? Right, so I just like this for Deion Lewis because he's not the usual suspect. We're, really, we're trying to be player agnostic here because we're trying to teach a man to fish, like you said so well at the top. We're trying to teach you what it looks like when players have real acceleration. And we're gonna contrast it with long speed later. Like acceleration is something that's, for me, closer to the line of scrimmage. And here's one where Dion De Lewis, what a four, five, six guy in, in a 40, he's not gonna run away from anybody, but this is five yards. And, and when he sees it, it's, it's really, really tough. On this one, just right away, he sees it, right? And Akib Talib is the corner. And granted, Akib Talib not always <laughs> the most willing tackler. But I think, no, not at all. I think Akib Talib thinks he has a bead on him. And again, I like the floppy little way a defender who knows he's misestimated tries to tackle and then, and then thank you, Akib Talib, falls down. 
it kind of shows, you know, deceptive burst in a tight area where Talib's coming downhill a little bit harder than he should because he doesn't expect Lewis to be able to put his foot in the ground Absolutely. and clear that kind of five-yard gap as fast as he does. Absolutely. You know, if he expected that burst, he probably would have taken a shallower angle. But he didn't because you don't really think of Deion Lewis as a, a very kind of bursty running back. But that's why he's so good. That's why Tennessee's paying him a lot of money is because in these tight areas, he can kind of get up to speed in two or three steps and turn those little kind of short pursuit angles again into bad angles. And, you know, if, if Tlaib took a shallower angle, he probably would have caught him ahead and he wouldn't have been able to, to, to he wouldn't have been trying to drag him down from behind. But again, because Lewis had the burst to kind of make him catch him from the side, Boom, he the was able zone. to drag That's him another right. three or four yards. Absolutely. You know, that, 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 that burst is the difference between a six yard run and an eight yard touchdown. That's what we're looking at here is do you have the burst to get everything possible out of a play? Kamara had it, Zeke had it, and as you can see, even Deion Lewis has it. So that's what we're looking for on these kind of plays. We are very proud to be working with Dollar Shave Club today. And Chris, I know you've been a member of Dollar Shave Club for going on three years now. So you know better than anybody that they are way, way more than just razors. They are. I mean, I use it all. I got the shampoo, I have the moisturizer, I have the One Wipe Charlies, the toothpaste. I really do use it all. They have every something for everything in the bathroom, and that's called the Daily Essential Kit, and they have a great way for people to try it out right now. Yeah, it's, it's only $5, and you get everything in the kit. It comes with a really nice, heavy razor. It comes with the blade and the One Wipe Charlies. Like, for me, moisturizers are big just because I have such dry skin. I live in Southern California, so, like, I, I moisturize all day, every day. So that's, that's huge for me. They got a little bit of something for everybody. So if you want to get the Daily Essential Starter Kit for $5, which is a, a monster value, and then you can get razors every month for the rest of time if you want to, check out the link in the description. It's a fantastic deal. And thank you again to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring us today. Okay, let's jump back into this with some players, or rather some plays that show maybe not so great acceleration. Things that you should look for on film as red flags when you're looking at different fantasy running backs, regardless of whether they're veterans or rookies. And we'll show one last year from Eddie Lacy, who again, not really known for burst, but to me, if you don't have the ability to change your speed at all in a run, it, it, you know, if you kind of max out in first gear like Lacy does here, you know, he has an opportunity to kind of bubble to the edge and maybe make something out of this run. But because he's so slow and cumbersome and has zero burst whatsoever, he can't bend the angle back. He can't break contain. You know, if this was Alvin Kamara or Todd Gurley, guys that do have actual great burst, this is probably a 15 or 20 yard run. But because it's Eddie Lacy. That's right. Yeah. He, he doesn't, like Alvin Kamara wouldn't need to do a sidestep there. He would just run past the stuffed offensive lineman. Blake Martinez is shoving an offensive lineman into Lacey's way, but Lacey is, doesn't have that juice to put one foot in the ground, burst his body to the left there, and wind up, you know, kind of going around the traffic. And so because he sort of bounces off it like a balloon, you know, sort of like the Trent Richardson balloon where he's just sort of bouncing around the room, fine, it's a, it's a gang tackle. But 100%, this is not, we're not requesting Eddie Lacy to be a jitterbug here. We're just requesting that he have a little bit of like one step burst. We would accept even average in this scenario, but it's, it's not even that. <laughs> that's so, right. And that, that's kind of, you know, it's an ex explanation of why Letty, Lacey kind of failed as a player last year. Is he, he doesn't even have average burst. So let's jump into this play with Jamal Williams here last year. Again, another example of bad acceleration that might be a red flag when you're looking at guys on tape. Take me through this one. Absolutely. Right. And Brett, I'll say this, like the, the result, I love a play like this where the result is good. On paper, this is a 25-yard run. People are like, oh, Jamal Williams has got it going on, right? And in fact, I think we both agree that on this play with a better running back, it would have been, a, probably would have housed it. It certainly would have been a longer touchdown run. Uh, Ryan Smith can stay with him. That This is the point, is that Ryan Smith can stay with him when there's kind of not really a move. There's a giant angle, but the, if he's got burst, he can get to the left there. He can get to the outside, and he's gone. He goes around him, but he just doesn't have that ability to hit another gear, so the defensive back can run with him until the posse arrives, right? So it's so important to realize that the box score lies. It's so important to realize that what you want is the running back who turns this arrangement, the way the 22 bodies fell on the field, into a touchdown. Yeah, you know, c contained was broken here. It was completely broken, and if, if it was any other running back, if this was Aaron Jones, this probably would have been a house call because Aaron Jones has a little bit more burst than Jamal Williams. But 
I mean, the, the back, he's literally off balance. He's got his foot in the ground or his hand on the ground. He's trying to figure out a way to get an angle saying, oh, crap, I got to get back outside. And then once he realizes Jamal Williams doesn't have that third gear, he's like, oh, never mind. I'm good. I'll just push him out. It'll only be a 15-yard run, 25-yard, whatever it is. Or again, if this was any other running back on the roster, literally any other running back on the roster, this would have been a touchdown. The free safety was all the way across the field. The corner was in a bad spot. But because he doesn't have that third gear, he's not getting a, 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 as near as much as he could have gotten about it. So again, we're talking about how lack of acceleration doesn't necessarily mean he won't get a 25-yard run. It just kind of limits his ceiling on what he's able to get when the defense breaks contain. That's right, because you're only going to break contain so many times. Please house it when they break contain. Yeah. Here's, here's the kind of the point that I was making off the top, which is kind of the difference between what I'm calling acceleration and what we have been calling long speed. So I think personally, when I scout someone like Derrick Henry, and there are other bigger backs who are like this, and maybe some not so big backs who are like this, when you get them to top speed, they run away from everybody, right? But it just, they, they need an aircraft airstrip, <laughs> right, to get, to get up to top speed. And I think Derrick Henry is sort of one of those guys. Here's a play where he does house it. It's a long touchdown. But I don't want you to think that because he housed it, it means he's got terrific burst and can get through the line of scrimmage quickly. This was not about fooling a defender at the line of scrimmage. It was about the defense, like you just said, opening up. And then for 250 pounds, this guy can really run. But is there anything here in this run that makes me think that the aircraft got, got turned around at anything other than sort of, to mix my metaphors, he's like a giant battleship who's got to turn. It's just that turning radius is long. It is, but you know, it kind of shows the value of the, you know, the difference between him and a, and a guy like Williams is that if he does break contain, he has the ability to get right. a touchdown out of it. He can punish a mistake on a defense, whereas you know, maybe other running backs, they don't have the speed to be able to punish those mistakes. So that's where his value right. comes but, from. Right, and my point is that everybody knows what long speed looks like. We're not going to sit in one of these videos and talk about, well, this is what it looks like when someone runs faster than all the other guys. We've been watching that since we were little kids watching football. It's the difference between this was not a run. I mean, Alex Collins had long runs that we could probably point to. Isaiah Crowell has long runs that we could probably point to where they didn't do anything particularly special acceleration-wise within those first five yards, but the defense breaks right. And absolutely, those players are probably better players than Jamal Williams because when the contain is broken, they are able to take it to the house. Yep. It's, it's the difference between getting to first and second gear and getting from second to third gear. That's what we're looking at, and that's the difference between long speed and short area acceleration. Very few running backs have both, but at the very least, you want to get a running back that has one of them. So that'll wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you uh, again very much for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to Chris's channel. Uh, subscribe to the Harris Football Podcast every single day. He's got the Almanac out now, uh, giving you all his player rankings. I've got my own player rankings on Patreon. So we got a lot of content for you to enjoy. Thank you again very much for watching. We'll see you next time.